Howdy, this is Phantom Strider. It's time to check out some cartoons generally aimed at the fair agenda. Women. While obviously any age or gender can enjoy whatever they personally connect with, generally there are certain cartoons made with the female demographic in mind. Whether or not these cartoons are actually what most ladies enjoy, they may offer more diplomacy solutions instead of violence, maybe more about resourcefulness. They may even focus on the complex intricacies of people and their emotional elements. So I'd like to try something a bit different and talk about the top three best and worst girls cartoons. And obviously, the irony of this list is it's coming from the perspective of a 28-year-old Asperger's guy. So, you know, take this list with a pinch of salt. Anyway, on to the countdown. The third worst girls cartoon is Barbie. A fairy secret. While it's generally accepted that Barbie cartoons are abysmal quality, we needed the absolute worst one for this list. So the challenge was on. Find the absolute worst Barbie movie ever to be shoved in the face of kids and reluctant parents. And I think I found it. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't believe you put your dress under my shoe. You wanted me to look bad. Barbie A Fairy Secret is somehow even more plastic and lifeless than the actual dolls. And at three minutes in, the lady herself appears for her movie premiere. Yes, the one, the only. <laughs> would have thought Barbie would be in the movie named Barbie. It has the standard four girls tropes you'd expect from the 40s. Shopping, royalty, fairies, magic, you name it. So Barbie and her friends go to the secret world of fairies known as Gloss Angeles. Gloss Angeles? I, I can't make this stuff up. That's the kind of pun that would get me slapped in the face and ushered out of my local seedy bar. So it turns out, Fairy life is all about shopping and fashion. Didn't you know that? Fairies love to shop for fashion and shop for coffees that also fly. Wouldn't that get really annoying? Secondly, who animated this thing? Objects don't even touch the ground, they just kind of float in the air. I guess because it's fairyland, all the objects float? Oh, I don't know. And all the time you're watching this, this Generic pop music is blaring through your speakers. Barbie Fairy Secret feels all about vanity and consumerism, and I personally think it's cognitive poison for its demographic. The third best girls cartoon is... Kim Possible and My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. This was a close tie, and I honestly couldn't decide between the two. My Little Pony has some A pluses with a few Bs, and Kim Possible is pretty much an A all the way through. I like them both though, so let's just chat about them both. Kim Possible was the big thing. It felt like the female version of Danny Phantom to me. The dialogue and scripts in Kim Possible actually felt smart and funny. For example, in one episode, the villain, Dr. Draken, tries to increase the size of his cerebral cortex in order to gain the intellectual capacity to actually make a doomsday weapon. That's doofenshmirtz levels of silly. And the only word I can describe the music with is wicked. The music just seems perfectly with the atmospheric, intense fight scenes. For a lot of the scenes, I was on the edge of my seat. And Kim herself is resourceful, clever, and very considerate of her friends. It's hard not to like her. As for Friendship is Magic, while I'm not as massive a fan as some other people out there, it does so much with what is essentially just a toy line. While primarily aimed at a young female audience, Friendship is Magic transcends this and has a universal audience through its messages about camaraderie, kindness, and caring for friends. Rather than just being about some villain trying to take over the world, the episodes might talk about communication problems and breaking down barriers between enemies, and how to handle misunderstandings between friends. While some of the episodes are pretty bare bones, there's strong underlying messages about diplomacy and doing things unconventionally. Somehow the messages in this cartoon just resonate with so many people. The main ponies are all engaging and easy to understand, but manage to be complex at the same time. This means the cartoon translates really well to a younger audience. I love the whimsical, colourful backgrounds as well. 
A bit like Steven Universe, the colour palette just has this way of putting me at ease. While I don't think every episode is a winner, I think the ones that are good are so good, this cartoon is definitely among the best girls' cartoons. And the second worst girls' cartoon is... Little Princess School by Video Brain Quadro. How does it get worse than this? Being so banal, vapid, unoriginal, and broken, and specifically aiming it at younger girls. I've heard some people describe Video Brain Quadro as the asylum of animation, and I think that's being too kind. An asylum would have some creativity within the insanity. Video Brain Quadro isn't even that. It doesn't have any creativity. It's just bland, two-cent animation. And what is most amazing is regardless of what language you listen to this cartoon in, the voices are still ear-jarring. Bianca, você tá de brincadeira, né? Somehow this cartoon has a curse that if you voice act in it, your voice is going to sound like two symbols being smashed over your ears. And not only that, but its messages sound like they're from the 40s. Young girls arrive at this academy to be trained how to look pretty. That's such an abysmal message that it makes my face hurt. Little Princess School looks like a no-name, one-cent Disney rip-off drawn by train monkeys. Even its moral messages are the worst of the bunch. The second best girls cartoon is... My Life as a Teenage Robot. Yes, this is empowering, but not smushing its message in your face. It talks about concepts like isolation and acceptance with subtlety. Recovering from public humiliation in 10 easy steps. With a fascinating setting of modern society set far in the future. As I've mentioned before, Jenning is a charming, realistic feeling character who I can very much imagine as a real person. Oddly enough, I think Jenny acts more like a teenager than any of the live-action Nickelodeon sitcoms I've seen. Which is odd, really, because she also acts like an angsty, wild version of Astro Boy. I never get to have any fun! I love the visuals, the simple yet atmospheric cyberpunk music, the alien-like future setting. It's a beautiful blend of both action, drama, and comedy. And at the same time, its messages about finding acceptance feel relatable. And we watch Jenny's character grow and mature throughout the series. In my opinion, this remains one of Nickelodeon's most perfectly balanced, enthralling cartoons. Personally, I'd love to see my life as a teenage robot get a few more reruns on Nick. And the number one worst girls cartoon is... Brats. Ugh. This is the number one tutorial on being slutty, superficial, and somehow more self-absorbed than Paris Hilton. Intelligence and craftiness is, of course, optional for these young ladies. Not cool! Angel, what you need is an easy A. I know just the class. As long as they're talking about the latest in fashion and accessories. Fashion and design. The Bratz cartoon is chock-a-block full of caricatures, cliches, and atrociously typical plots such as everything going wrong at the prom, or some lady might be trying to interrupt their fashion magazine. Just listen to these Bratz shovelware movie titles to get a good feel of what this cartoon is all about. Bratz pampered pets, Bratzillas, Bratz genie magic. Bratz fashion pixie, Bratz starring and styling, and Bratz forever diamond, and Bratz go to Paris. Not only is this cartoon just a giant Bratz doll commercial, but the ladies are the worst role models since Paris Hilton opened a life coaching workshop. Every episode was obviously written in a rush and is filled with lifeless performances. Movements and characters are unnaturally stiff. All the designs are blocky and the backgrounds have no attempt at originality, color or personality. It's a giant discriminatory, horrendously corporate splat on the pavement made purely with the intention to sell merchandise. 
The messages it portrays to young girls are dubious at best. The girls are very accurately titled brats, often acting like pampered, condescending snobs. Brats is shallow, soulless, corporate, annoying, and certainly not worth your time. I can comfortably call brats the number one worst girls cartoon. And the number one best girls cartoon is Miraculous Ladybug. If you want an example of the sophistication of France, just check out a single episode of Miraculous Ladybug. This cartoon is so artistically gorgeous. It's like if poetry became an animation and put on a giant ladybug suit. But that's the thing, it can make a teenage girl in a giant ladybug suit and a teenage boy in a giant cat suit look good. And not just good, but really good. Like something like Kingdom Hearts, the story isn't great. In fact, it's quite bare bones and simple. But like Kingdom Hearts, I appreciate the pure style more than the story. It's about the artistry of what we can see unravel on the screen. I love the colors, the tiny details, like the shiny blue sheen of Marinette's hair. About a teenager named Marinette who's secretly a superhero, this is a teenage romantic drama done okay. Not focusing solely on the romantic drama, but the characters, the villains, the visual style. To me, this is Sailor Moon done really well. I can't get across how gorgeous everything is to look at in this cartoon. I love this villain as well. He's so beautifully over the top. It won't be long before frustration turns to anger. Fly away, my little Akuma, and evilize him. He evilizes the innocent. He's just perfect. And I love the concept of him taking advantage of people's emotions. Even the emotional challenges the evilized characters are going through are relatable. It's packed with good messages that are subtle and smart, it's stylish, it's just beautiful. And the Ladybug doesn't just use brute force, she is resourceful and will use intelligence to figure out how to stop the villains. Miraculous Ladybug is a compelling, hilariously camp, gorgeous animation masterpiece. And I personally consider it the absolute best girls cartoon. You know, it's a nice age to live in when we can talk about animation aimed at both men and women that is really high quality, that transcends gender barriers, makes us think, and challenges us. While there's still battles to be fought, sometimes it's important to take time to appreciate everything behind us. This list was a work of joy for me, and I hope I was able to do some of the Fair Agenda's cartoons a little justice. Do you think I missed a particularly good or bad girls cartoon? If you think so, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.